Stephen Bushy I get. They told me they were going to meet me on uh, number four island on some big white boat. There's a white boat over there. Hey, they didn't say it was a big white boat, that's a single lady. Come on, mate. We better go and do some fishing. He's here. John Pierce, how are you, mate? Good, day, mate. Nice to see you. Bushy. Hey, John. Welcome aboard. Thank you. We're uh, leaving a bit of style behind here, but we're coming into another. We're going to have to come down one class. Yeah. Mate. One class. Uh. I'll tell you what, John. It's nice to be back on board. It's good to have you, mate. I'm here on the real hooker at the Similan Islands off Thailand and I've caught up again with my old mate John Pierce, who's the skipper and owner of this beautiful vessel. Mate, we're heading out fishing today. You've been telling me about this sea mount. What are they catching out there? Well, we've been lucky enough. We've had a few small black marlin there, certainly some wahoo, schooling yellowfin, and definitely a sailfish. Sounds pretty good to me. Let's get going. Good. <laughs> Let's go, mate. Get some gear ready. and sea from the Similan Islands to a sea mount. And as the name implies, that's a submerged mountaintop. Comes up out of very deep water to a relatively shallow peak, and it's a prime bit of fish real estate. A fantastic structural element that attracts all sorts of fish. As you can see, we're not alone. That's a local tuna boat that would have shot its purse seine nets last night around a school of yellowfin tuna. And that's what we're here chasing today, yellowfin tuna and wahoo. But Bushy, we've got the bases pretty well covered, haven't we? Yeah, we've got some large marlin lures on the outriggers, maybe a tuna will eat those as well. And on the inside rods, we've got bibless minnows and deep running lures. So whatever comes along, it could be chaos. And just to add to the chaos, we've also got casting lures. So once we hook up and we've stopped the boat, we can throw these metal lures out and rapidly retrieve them as well. We should be able to get into some real mayhem today if we can find a couple of schools of these fish. The director's going to love this one. <laughs> Well, this is only a little fish, a little tuna of some sort, I'd say. It's hit quite a large lure. Yep, it's a little skipjack. Now, these things are found throughout the oceans of the world. They're one of the most prolific of the tuna species, skipjack tuna, until fairly recently in Australia, better known as striped tuna. And you can see why the stripes there on the belly, beautiful iridescent purples on the back. And these things are eaten by just about every large predatory fish in the sea, from sharks to big tuna to marlin and wahoo. They're the reason we're fishing this area. The top of this seamount attracts a lot of fish like this. They come here to eat the really small bait fish, and the big predators that we're after come to chase fish like this skipjack. So we're on the right track. Back of it. Gee, that's still a great colour. Oh, must have been a couple Whoa, there, eh? Because I think that in. other, uh, yeah, the other was, outrigger got hit as well. There was a hit on that right outrigger. Oh! Tell you what, there was a hit on this just then while we were. Real really lacquer about something. Look at that in that blue water. What a beautiful fish. Oh, they are just like a neon light and they can change their colours so quickly. These dolphin fish are one of the fastest growing fish in the sea. This little fish is probably only, oh definitely less than a year old and they can grow to 15, 20 kilos in just a couple of years. The scientists think they've got a, a lifespan of probably only about four years and the, they've got the potential to reach as much as 30 kilos or more in that time. Look at the blue there in the leading edge of the pectoral fins and those little dots that are just haloed with bright blue. Fantastic fish. Too pretty to kill, actually. I think we'll pop this one back in the water, much as the crew would like to keep him and eat him. We 
is off like a shot. Now usually where there's one of those, there's more. What do you reckon, Bushy? Oh, I think mine's a little tuna, probably a little stripe or something. Yeah, me too. Skipjack, I'd say. You got the heavier gear, you'll get yours in quicker, I think. Well, let's see what happens. Feels like a stripe tuna, though. Come on. You see the silver flashes there, he looks great. Yeah, I might leave him there for a minute. Something <laughs> large might come and monster him. Come on, fish. I think I drew the short straw here, Steve. There's about 10 <laughs> lures with hooks on here between me and that fish. This is what you call Thai roulette. Pretty effective rig though, the uh, the old daisy chain, isn't it? Yeah. All right, little jelly bean one. I'll give this to the crew. And they can put him, there, put him away for some bait. Thanks, John. Turning him upside down, quieting him down. Okay. Just show you this Jay-Z chain rig. I've made a bit of a mess of it here, but the way this works is that many of these tuna are following along and they're used to attacking bait fish in a school. So what this does, there's a whole lot of little squids here tied onto our trace, all with hooks, and they look more natural. They look like a whole school of little fish, and that's much more likely to make the tuna come up and attack them. And if you're after bait, half a dozen tuna at a time is much better than one. So it's a good little trick, the daisy chain. Just be really careful when you're pulling them in because you can uh, hook yourself. That's the only detriment with that rig. Well, here's mine, Bushy. Right. And I'm using an interesting rig here too. It's working on the same kind of principle of trying to create the impression that there's a lot of things happening there. This is called a bird teaser. As you can see, it's got little wings, looks a bit like a bird, and it flutters along on the surface, makes a real commotion, and imitates other fish feeding or whatever. Just creates a lot of excitement. And about two metres behind it, two and a half metres behind it, is one of these jet head lures with a metal, chrome metal head and a skirt and a single hook. And as you can see, the little skipjack tuna has nailed that. He's probably been initially attracted by the skittering of that bird teaser. And then he spotted the little pink squid racing along behind it. And without any hesitation at all, he's hit it. Things are definitely starting to happen out here. I like to see bait like this in the area. I reckon we're in with a good showing here, Bushy. Yep. Any luck, the next one will be a big one. Okay, I got it. No, it's a big sailfish. I got a good look at it. Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh, look at him go! Okay, go back slowly. That's it. That's more like it, Steve. Oh boy. It's all happening here, folks. Pretty sure this is a big sailfish. It could be a marlin, but I got a pretty good look at it when it hit the lure and came out of the water. And I think it's a rather large sailfish. You can hear it taking line. We're clearing all the other lines. Once we get everything clear, I can get to work on this fish. What a beauty. Woohoo! That is a thumper, Steve. Where is he hooked? Top of the head. That's a tricky one. I don't know. Just caught, caught up. He's lassoed in the trace. It's a very big sailfish. That is a big sail. Oh, oh yeah. no, he's no, right he's through the mouth that. on one side. He's lassoed himself, which is... He may not be all that well hooked, Bushy. He's hooked through the mouth, okay? Yeah. One we hook's all right. Bushy is getting tail this way. If I can. Woohoo! Let go, Bushy! Let it go. Woohoo! <laughs> He's away. That stirred him up. That stirred Bushy's him up. Watch for. As soon as Bushy grabbed hold of the leader, the fish came to life and took off. Bushy let go of the leader and it came flying out of the water. It took it in the mouth and actually got a, a turn of the leader around the top of its head and through its dorsal fin. And now it's playing up a bit. 
Okay, you can see the top of the trace or leader coming out of the water there now. That's the, the swivel. We've only got about a two metre leader. There we go. He's finally rolled on his side for the first time. Shows he is getting a bit tired. Wish he's got the leader. He'll let it go if he has to. Got the fish here beside the boat. Got to be a little bit careful of their bill here. Watch him, Bushy. <laughs> Watch him. <laughs> that bill is very sharp. You don't want to get in front of it when one of these things jumps. Right, now we're going to quickly lift him up on the side and show him to you. Oh, big one. It's a very big sailfish. Roll him that way, guys, and I'll lift the sail. Now you can see that the, the leader did split his fin here. That's an injury that he will recover from. There's been many sailfish tagged and released with splits in their fins and recovered. He's in good condition. He's a big, long sailfish. Look at the bars and everything here. Let's get him back in the water and swim him for a little bit, Bushy. Now what we're doing is swimming this fish, getting the water going through his gills again. He's pretty tired. Got that split fin, but he's okay. He's not bleeding profusely. His tail's going. As soon as John thinks that he's okay, he's just gonna let him go and he'll take off. It's amazing how many fish have been tagged in this condition and recovered a year, two years, three years later. They've got remarkable powers of recuperation. I think he's ready. To okay, mate, send him on his way. See you. And down he dives. <laughs> We're there. Well, that's what it's all about, an Andaman Sea sailfish. And what beautiful conditions to catch one in. Worked up a little bit of a sweat, but I tell you what, I'm pretty happy.